Good evening, everybody. So before we start, if I could just have everybody make sure that they silence their cell phones. They are going to be recording tonight. So my name is Chris Burdick, and I am the local representative for Standard Process and Mediherb, two companies that I hope you're all very familiar with. And we, along with natural healers like Dr. Tent, we believe that the, the body can take care of itself as long as it's provided the nutritional assets it's needed. So I've been with Standard Process for nine years now, and I've had the privilege of working with some of the nation's top healers. None, and I can tell you this, compare to Dr. Ten. <laughs> so one of my responsibilities as being a rep for Standard Process is to orchestrate the appropriate ongoing educational opportunities for our natural healing practitioners. These events must be efficient, impactful, inspiring, and most of all, pertinent to today's challenging patient. Earlier this year, we had the idea and the vision to create a next level event, something that we've never done before, and we wanted to have it local here in Detroit. This event had to be something different. So what we did was we brought the nation's top four natural healers in. They were gonna be our teachers. And we wanted to have the audience made up of the top natural healers in the country, the most elite. And that's just what we did. Back in May, we hosted an event down at Motor City Casino, and we had 150 of the nation's top natural healers fly all over the country to hear what these four practitioners had to say. Not just these four practitioners, but in particular, Dr. Tent. We had chiropractors, medical doctors, acupuncturists, naturopaths, and others. They all came to learn, and they came to learn from Dr. Ten. This event quickly escalated into our most influential event to date. I field calls every week from all over the country asking me two questions. When are we going to do this again? And when can we come and hear Dr. Tent speak again? For that, I owe Dr. Tent a debt of gratitude. Tonight is going to be an extension of some of what Dr. Tent mm. taught to these 150 elite practitioners from across the country. I think we are also fortunate to have someone like Dr. Tent in our lives and, more importantly, on our side. It's a rare thing to have access to such an elite professional. With that said, it's my privilege and honor to introduce Dr. Tent to the stage. Uh -huh. I sure don't understand a lot of this. <clears throat> well, I enjoyed Ralph Cramden, actually. That was funny. <laughs> the guy that never wanted to, uh, he pretty much was a one-take guy on the Honeymooners, which I just kind of remembered that was kind of funny. <clears throat> Breaking top, what is this, what do I have to say here? Oh, just the stuff. I'm not sure I don't miss anything. Jeff Seneschal is going to do a great lecture on breaking toxic habits. We talked about some of that today because it's a very important topic today because there's a lot of things that people don't, under, don't realize are toxic habits. Virtual appointments. I want to mention something here. I didn't want to really talk about this. But I'm going to talk about it because it's a gigantic epidemic problem today. If I asked you, what do you think has made your men, <clears throat> what do you think has ruined men the most today? Their wives. Their wives? <laughs> <laughs> Spoken by an unmarried guy, of course. <clears throat> Everybody wants to talk about plastics is an easy one. Today at lunch, it talked about the highest cable shows out there, or the, uh, the uh, internet. <clears throat> what do you think is the most watched thing on the internet? Exactly. <clears throat> now, what the, what's happened to your men, believe it or not, drive up your prolactin, drive down your dopamine, 
and you will drive up your estrogen. Your men have been feminized by the internet. <clears throat> and they had no clue what was being done to them because it happened right in front of them to them. It drives up your estrogen. Important stuff that the public, I gave Jeff a slide on that today, so to add to his toxic habits, because our men have been demasculinated and feminized in ways that you never saw coming. Huge. <clears throat> Virtual video appointments, we have a blast with our video appointments. We had some fun today. We're on Instagram and Facebook Live. We like to put stuff out there because the public has pretty much been brainwashed beyond their ability to understand. <clears throat> Please like us on Facebook because there's a lot of internet mischief today. So our message is out there and you heard that the doctors seem to really enjoy it and I felt bad for them and I'll get on to that later. Subscribe on YouTube so you keep up with the stuff that we do. We have a great staff. Watch our DHS protocols. <clears throat> now, there's a lot of things about energy today <clears throat> that have been so misunderstood. I'd like to do a special lecture on some interesting topics. This quantum world is opening up some incredible things today. You're going to know more about energy, the stuff that has been misunderstood and lambasted for just misinformation. This is going to be a very advanced topic that I think is going to take you guys to a little different spot than what you've been to before. <clears throat> this was the conference that we did. The Motor City Casino, the room <clears throat> that we were in, the only thing I disagree, I don't really think this is clinical genius. I learned from people that were geniuses. I more or less copied them. Those guys were the smart guys. <clears throat> this was me showing you my little Rachel. Apparently I'm inviting the crowd to come to me at that point when Tony took that picture. Come to me and I'll set you for all free. <clears throat> <clears throat> the outside those windows was the Detroit skyline. It was the best view I have ever seen. It was a beautiful room. After, we had to do a panel discussion. There's Dr. Brockenshire and myself, great guy. So we had fun, it was a fantastic room. And I have to tell you, you know, the doctors treated me extremely well. I have never been better treated from what these guys saw. And it was just very nice and they were very polite. And I didn't want to do this. This was a free gig to help the doctors. I did not want to do this. Chris, <clears throat> representing Standard Process, asked me so humbly and politely not to make money for his company. Would you please help share your stuff with these doctors? The way he asked me broke me down, so I did it. I know how desperate these guys are to learn. So he was very polite and asked me because in my life, I told the doctors. Um, this is, I started my 39th year, August 3rd, my 39th year. Now, to spend 39 years getting the results that the doctors try to track down, and the way I've been treated by the public is beyond disrespectful as an alternative practitioner. The things I've had to go through, the things people have said to me at parties, I would never talk to a stranger like I've been talked to, ever. It's embarrassing. I shrink into the couch when people say stupid things to me. It's been 39 years of complete, total disrespect. Every time I was, just as my own personal life, Randy Tent, the crowd, you're a chiropractor. Oh boy, have I been to those. I've never had a positive comment in a neutral setting in my entire life. And <clears throat> I started with guys that were doing what I'm doing now. Seven weeks in the school, Dr. Versendahl, <clears throat> Dr. Goodhart, Dr. Nugent, Harry Eidner. I jumped, there was so much off-campus stuff going on in Palmer back in 78. It was the ripest time if you were paying attention. I was 19 years old. Most of the guys averaged 26 or 27. They weren't interested in the off-campus stuff. I was fascinated by the off-campus stuff. All the great stuff was outside of school. It wasn't in school. Seven weeks in the school, I walked into Versendahl stuff. I watched guys do what I'm doing now. I started doing that quickly. I quickly pushed me past the school guys because the school guys were very old-fashioned. 
these good heart burst and all great muscle testers opened my eyes. I was 19. I had this stuff pretty well down before I walked into clinic. Now, walking in a clinic was, I didn't have to do a whole lot because I was better than the guys there because off campus stuff prepared me. That's what I told the doctors. This is not stuff that I came up with. I, I did extra stuff. The guys in my, not one person in my class knows what I'm doing. I graduated with 120 people. They weren't interested in this. I can't believe that they missed this. Can't believe it. <clears throat> then, I went to, Jeff and I went down to Texas. Went down to Houston. We were in a, biotics had a big functional medicine seminar down there. We went to that. That was an experience in itself. We had a blast. <clears throat> There's Dr. Olry. There's Dennis DeLuca. And I spent a lot of time with Dennis and Daryl DeLuca. The DeLuca brothers own biotics. I can't tell, I'm very impressed with those two brothers. Their heart and soul is in biotics. They're there every day. They watch all the lectures. They knew exactly who I was, meeting them for the first time. They're wonderful guys, and I, I love supporting these two guys. Their heart and soul is in biotics. <clears throat> There's, we had a blast with Dr. Olry. A guy gets on, this is, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about him coming up, but this guy's a genius. He wrote Minerals for the Genetic Code with Charles Walters. In my life, I could have cared less about LeBron James, <clears throat> Al Kaline. These guys introduced, I was Nikolai Tesla, inter, I was interested in him. I was interested in alternative, the Hieronymus machine. The alternative thinkers, because my mother was an alternative thinker. So his guy thinks outside the box, we had a blast together. I said, Chris, there's my biotics rep. I said, you guys stand next to each other. This is the picture that I ended up taking. That's why you can't take young kids anywhere. <laughs> I just want them to stand. Just stand. I said, Jeff, do you want me to use this or not? He was totally sober. <laughs> now, they took us out for dinner Saturday night. Dr. Ulrey had to inhale those oysters next to me. I wanted to throw up, <clears throat> but he's good heavens. We had a blast together. Now, for some reason, I am not a brown noser. I've never been. Doing things, there is Dennis. I end up at the president's table every time we do stuff because he's always around. Now, look at that look on his face. Now, we're at, we're at lunch. We're at that, you know, I don't know, whatever expensive hotel this is at. I forgot what it was. <clears throat> it's the kind of food that's more of a decoration than the food. So he's, Jeff's on the other side of me. I didn't know Jeff was pulling this. He's, his Instagram thing, there was a salad in front of me. They were having a bet to see if I'd eat the salad or not. Did I eat it? There's nothing else to eat. You had to eat the salad. You got that expensive decoration in front of you. So they served me my food. I eat the chicken. The rest was a decoration. Ori goes, are you done with that plate? Picked it right up and put it, he started eating my plate. That's my food. I'll eat the rest. I said, all right, I don't, you're kind of odd. That's strange. But so he ate the rest of my food. He ate the decoration on the plate. So we had a blast. <clears throat> this is where the story starts. This is why I started with the doctors. Rich, everybody knows Rich Dr. Ulrey. He's up in Hillman, Michigan. He's famous. He's brilliant. He's writing a book on telomeres and aging. Telomeres and aging. So he's an old hockey player. So high intensity exercise as a hockey player. He said, man, Kent's doing it right with this anti-aging. I got to get my hockey stuff out and do what he's doing. Now, if you want to copy my hockey schedule at this age, you better be in shape. I'm 61. I play over, me and my son played over 30 hockey Monday night. We had a two to one game. Missed the game, didn't you, son? <laughs> yes, you did. Misread the time, which we all do. That was kind of a torture. <clears throat> so my point is, making sure your mineral density up. I get a call from Dr. Ulrey, the famous Dr. Ulrey. Doc, I need you bad. I tried to copy your hockey schedule. I tripped and fell. I, my legs are giving out. I have horrible back pain. I had to cut my schedule. And once again, everybody up here that adjusts me makes it worse. This is the story of my life. Everywhere I go, I have to hear this stuff. There wasn't anybody. I said to the doctors, before I'm dead, 
I want to sit at a party one time, hear a story like you guys got, hear a story like the other guys got. I just want to be proud of my job one time in a room full of people that I do not know. It has never happened for decades. If I recorded things said to me, you wouldn't believe it. Then people come to the lecture and go, oh God, I should have kept my mouth shut. Yeah, you probably should have, but you've been trained to pick on this because the TV brainwashed you that this was quackery. This isn't your own thoughts. You were told to think like this. And it's so sad that most people fell for this. So I'm thinking, oh my gosh, everybody's messed up always back up north. What kind of mess am I getting into? Then I thought, wait a minute. This is your profession. It's probably a... There's Dr. Ulrey's back. He said, I need your special talents to help me out. I found the L3, L4 disc on the right, muscle testing him very specially. Now, there's a perfectly straight spine. There's fantastic disc bases. This is an up north puzzle. I don't, I'm looking at a perfect back. So this is, you can't feel your legs. Your legs are giving out. They're all numb. This back was stuck. <clears throat> I did, how many patients do I have in here? Raise your hands. All you patients, raise your hands. All of these folks have had real adjustments. His back was stuck. <clears throat> he limped in, four hour drive, walking up, the girls were watching, he ran out, drove four hours home, pain free. Now I've heard he's had a little trouble. I said, if I got it unstuck, maybe the guys up north can follow it up from here. His back was just stuck. You had a stuck back that's turned the corner. I can point a lot of stuck backs that people don't adjust right. So thinking, oh, this is going to be scary, it was the easiest back again. That's what boggles up north. And if you're up north, they put 22 radioactive seeds in my cousin up north for a PSA that was six and smoked him with that. Surviving up north doctors. So now, this is the famous Dr. Olry that is a genius and writes all the advanced literature that we all love to study. He came four hours to get his back adjusted because Nobody can fix his back between here and four hours. You crushed the old hockey player here. <laughs> Everything working good now? You got it. We're sending him back home in one place. He's gonna get back on the ice probably next week. And it was a long drive, but it was worth it. Thank you, Randy. Thank you for the advice. <clears throat> now, this is special. I said, now that you're pain free, I want you to give a gift to my patients. This guy, you ready? Listen to this. This is, he's, he's, you're not going to hear this again. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Dr. Richard Olry. I'm from Hillman, Michigan. Dr. Tantz has asked me to discuss with you some of the effects of a common weed killer called Roundup. I ask people, what do you think Roundup is? And they say, what's a poison? I go, yes, it is. How does it work? It kills everything. And I go, that's pretty much right. I go, do you understand how it works? And they go, well, no. And I said, would you understand this if I said this is an antibiotic? And people, they, antibiotic, what are you talking about? This is a weed killer. And then I explained to them that Roundup was actually sprayed on the fields to kill the bacteria that plants use to absorb minerals. Now, would you purposely put an antibiotic in your system every day with every meal? Well, this is what has been invited into our lives unintentionally with the use of this petrochemical that's applied to the fields. Now I tell my patients, you either eat organic or you panic because you don't know if that field has been sprayed with Roundup. Just because the food is not genetically modified doesn't mean that the wheat killer is not used on most conventional foods. Go to the internet and then start seeking out what foods contain Roundup. As an antibiotic on the fields, killing the bacteria for the purpose of killing off weeds, makes the plants we eat 40 to 50% less nutritious in terms of minerals, and minerals run the show. The first book I produced, Minerals for the Genetic Code. Brilliant. The second one, Minerals for Tumor <clears throat> Suppression. My third book, Minerals for Acupuncture Meridian. There's more books, but everything is minerals, minerals, minerals. Yes. So at the convenience of a farmer, They'll spray an entire field on a Monday so the whole field matures by Friday. Where does the Roundup go that's sprayed out the fields? Into the seeds we eat. So if you eat oatmeal or the various types of breads, 
there's a darn good chance that it's full of Roundup. Now, if that Roundup is in your food and it gets into your system, it still acts like an antibiotic. It's generally recognized that 80% of your immune system is found in the bacteria of your gut. And if you apply Roundup to your gut, you will kill off the bacteria needed to absorb the proper nutrition from your food. And if you start killing off species of bacteria, you will go into starvation into the presence of the food you eat. So be wary of the word Roundup. I personally view this as a genocidal herbicide because it's found everywhere. It's estimated by Dr. Don Huber that 85% of the water in the United States is now laced with Roundup. The makers of Roundup currently have 11,800 lawsuits against them for various complaints of stuff like cancer. It's not a good mineral to have in your life or around you. The makers of Roundup will tell you the half-life is very short. In reality, the half-life of Roundup is 22 years, meaning if you put it in your garden by mistake, you have to wait about 40 years before all the Roundup disappears <laughs> because it is a continuous active ingredient and nobody wants to eat demineralized food with Roundup. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Randy, for having me. <clears throat> the book. I got the seven. I said, look, we're going to be in Houston. There's going to be a lot of dead time. Bring me your latest book. So there's the book. Now, for the people that are all spooked up by energy, this is his back cover. Written for the understanding how, how, how weak magnetic energy moves through the human body from subatomic particle to matter, quantum. Now, after I got done adjusting Dr. Olry, Kathy, who was in today, I pulled her. I said, let's go across the hall. This is a city back. I showed you a country back that they couldn't handle. This is what a city back looks like. She has a ruptured L4, L5 disc. It's all grinding together there. The discs are going a hundred different ways. When your back's that straight, you got a really bad disc. <clears throat> a really bad disc. She got an old ruptured disc. She has no curve. I got her for 30 years living with that back. She does physical stuff. That's a crummy back. <clears throat> She's a little warrior like most of the women are. Your men have been demasculinated and you women are a lot stronger than your men. <clears throat> the olden days, remember cowboys and Indians? Now it's livestock management technicians and indigenous peoples. <laughs> I like the new game. <clears throat> I started with the doctors. I said, you understand, I showed this before to you. This is the group that we're losing to. When I go home, watch that weirdo walk across the street with his diabetic medication, the guy cutting the lawn, whoever that weirdo is, <clears throat> Farxigia and Janu, all these diabetic medications, they got to put a warning on that will eat your junk away. If my pills ate your junk away, do you think they would let you, me sell this? This is what's out there. This is a warning. It can eat your junk away if you have a bad side effect. This is the USA Today. This is sold on TV every... I said to the doctors, we're losing to them. That was my first slide when I went into my stuff. <clears throat> Chris said, this is one of the doctor's famous parts right here. This is the guy <clears throat> that went to my high school. It's funny when you're a doctor near your hometown. I grew up in Livonia, went to Stevenson High School, graduated in 75. This guy shows up, hey, we went to high school together. I couldn't spot him from the man in the moon, but we went to high school together, and after a while, he said, you don't remember me, do you? I said, not at all. We talked for one minute by a crick one day. I said, okay, well, I got a good memory. I said, I don't remember that at all. <clears throat> he had a horrible, nice-looking guy with horrible problems. We got it all cleaned up. This is the end. Thank God it worked like it did, because he was a mess. <clears throat> this is the end. Now look at this urinalysis test. So I put this up in front of the doctors. Symptoms of ongoing urination trouble. Weak stream and weak cloudy color. Oops. Look at this. Cloudy plus three white blood cells. Occult blood plus one white 30. I said to them, now women, this is special. Now, it's not a lot of women here today. 
I asked the men, I said at the doctor's office, at the seminar, okay, women, put your heads down. I want to know, men, how many stand to pee and how many sit to pee? That's a standard. And I asked him, how do you pee? Well, I get up, I dribble a little bit, then I do jumping jacks. <laughs> then I walk in the hall, and then I pee a little bit more. He's right. And I do jumping jacks again. This is the morning. I said, you need to sit. He said, that's for girls. I said, yep, Francine, you're going to start sitting now because you can't <laughs> pee. So when you men, my mother, my lovely mother, asked me to sit. So I didn't pee all over the wall. And I sat because I loved my mother, and if it made her life easier, great. Do you know how much different my life has been going to the bathroom sitting than standing? How far has this gone? All you men, when you feel full all the time, they have to catheterize you. You've all been plugged and drilled. They all are dribbling. They're all leaking. Because the men, I can spot who sits and who stands. I pee twice as good sitting as I ever did standing. Ever. That was simple to see. And men, I got a whole room of doctors and men sitting to pee and taking the right supplements because they're getting tons of infection. So the men that have gone through all this, they've been poked and they're sitting outside my office or the bathroom door. Do you realize I did not know when they reamed me, I would have 14 seconds to pee when I had this urge. They're peeing in their shoe. They're peeing down their leg. These men have to take pads with them everywhere to go because they're dribbling all over themselves because somebody rammed something up them and their weenie doesn't hold anymore. They call me from the nursing room, your dad smells like pee. I said, everybody smells like pee here. Why? I said, you've shoved so many hoses in them, nobody can hold their sphincters anymore. And their eyes, they looked at me like, is that true? Is that why? I'm talking to the nurses at the nursing home. They didn't get it. I can tell who's been reamed and who hasn't because they dribble. <clears throat> so this man is, he has some standard process, has some great suggestions for this. Sit. You men come in, we'll help you make some decisions. Because when you don't release and they do that bladder check and they put all that dye inside of you and they see how much you eliminate, oh, you're holding back 20%. By the time you get all done monkeying this thing all up, you will never go to the bathroom right again and you're done. My dad. So I had to tell the nurses this. So the men are sitting and they pee better. They have a lot less inflammation. Their prostate's happier. The doctors love that one. I showed you this last time, but I use this as a doctor because this whole parasite thing, you don't want to get in trouble with parasites, so you talk about the signs and symptoms. I want to show the doctors this because everybody's puzzled about parasites. How do you know? What can you tell? Stool culture, steel samples, great Smoky Mountain labs. There's some great labs that do this stuff, but all those dots are pork parasites in this Indian fellow's brain, and he's 18. Now he's dead. He died from this two weeks later. That's pork. So I showed this to the crowd. <clears throat> I showed this to the doctors. You ready? And they loved it. And they loved it. It gets better. You ready? Here's my son's card. I told Dylan's story. Well, Dylan kicked his brother and bit his mother. You were only half wrong that day. There's my son. What he passed, he learned to deworm himself because deworming him as a kid, you liked that, didn't you? Deworming him as a kid changed his life. In fact, he sends me pictures of his parasites because we're that close. <laughs> so, after I talked about parasites and bacon, let's talk about hypocrites. One of my favorite topics in the world is hypocrites. There's church hypocrites, and many of you know many. Like the patients who come in and want me to know that they're a Christian right off the bat, I grab my wallet. Where's my wallet? Got to know where my wallet is because this guy's telling me how good he is. I know we're going to be in one of them moments soon. Hypocrites. The church people, Glenn knows about it. Glenn's a real guy. You're the same at church. You're the same at work. You're the same at home. 
people meet me from all over the world like, you know, you're kind of the same guy on the YouTube. Isn't that funny? I'm kind of the same guy on YouTube. I didn't have that plastic personality to play at the right time, which is most of the people I've dealt with in my life, which if I cut out. If you're going to have these 12 faces, just go somewhere else. I'm not that interested in dealing with you because that's most of the people I've dealt with today, crooks, thieves, and liars, and I'm done. I try to run an honest practice. It's more successful. So after my little special story, when the doctors are together, they will eat different in front of them. They play a game. I eat the same. So I picked up, there's my plate, a donut, half an English muffin, and a crappy bagel. It was a brunch on, I'd already spoke on Saturday. There was a brunch on Sunday. I had to do a panel discussion with the doctors. There it is. So I took the donut. Nobody would touch a donut. All of them, all these sickly doctors are they're having all the fruit and all this crap they don't want to eat. They want it. Nobody touched a donut. So I said, I'm going to grab a donut just because nobody did. And I'm going to get a pop too. I'll get a Sprite and a donut just to make them mad. <laughs> I do it all the time. I'm healthier now. They're listening to me. They still have blown it. Exactly. That's why I'm. So the famous Dr. White, you blocked him out. He's a great guy. I said, Stu, can you hold up my donut? All the doctors are standing in line to go through the line. Stu, hold up my donut for everybody in front of the doctors. He did. Notice everybody's plate. Bacon, bacon, bacon. I said, let me ask you a question. You guys really think that this donut is worse than that hunk of bacon on your plate? And Jennifer from Traverse City, she kind of, I was thinking about that when I picked it up. I wanted to thank you for an amazing presentation this past weekend. The time and knowledge you shared giving us young pups glimpses of your, I can't even read the rest. It was very touching. She was smart. She sought me down to sit with me. I did this when I was young. I chased down the good guys. The rest of the guys ignored me. A couple came. She learned some stuff at that table that I, the rest of the guys did not learn. I can't read the rest of that. Now, since everybody eats organic and everybody eats perfect, I have the Americans will spend hours telling me that they eat organic, nothing's ever touched the ground, they use special gloves, and they don't know how they got sick because they lived perfectly. The foreign patients, we just get at it, but the Americans are going to tell me that their life has been pure and pristine. They have no clue how they got that E. coli. I have no clue. It's impossible. There's your produce. There's your lettuce coming in over the border. There's a lettuce truck. There's the immigrants in your produce trucks. They're hiding. This is happening daily at the border. They're crapping in your food and the trucks. That's a DOD. That's right from the border. It's online. And I had a truck driver telling me, uh, Susan, yesterday, she said, you have no clue what's coming from Canada. What they're bringing in, from, I don't want to say that nationality, but there's a truck and they're taking over the trucks in Canada and this is where they're bringing all the people in. That's all lettuce. Where do you think the toilet is in there? It's the lettuce. I know you eat organic. You got organic pee on top of that. <laughs> <clears throat> Salt of the earth, Bobby and her husband, Killian, Alabama, <clears throat> watches all these lectures. I know this is me. I got an atlas wedge. Her whole left side's dead. <clears throat> she drives up. I walk in, you know, great salt of the earth, wonderful, you know, working class people. And I walk in, she wants me to fix her, and I know she's just a train wreck. I'm going to give her that atlas adjustment and she's going to run out. <clears throat> Patient had two strokes five years apart. Left side still affected with weakness. Patient was on 11 medications after the stroke. Now she's down to three. Blood pressure has been high except after neck adjustment. Please, I want my atlas checked. Strokes caused by clots. Graham had a stroke at age 50. That derailed them. They couldn't think independently after that. So this was heartbreaking. Let's keep going. I looked at her file. Hmm. Your calcium's out of range. 
You got a parathyroid tumor. What? Well, you got a parathyroid tumor. Okay, you ready? Bobby is a very nice 67 year old lady sent to us by her chiropractor in Michigan. She and her husband have seen over 25 doctors trying to find out what to do, and no one knows why her calcium is elevated. She's been having strokes from a parathyroid tumor. 25 doctors are looking at this. This is open and shut. And they had to drive up. I just got her parathyroid tumor removed at this clinic. And she's pretty beat up from the mischief. How much is she going to get better? I know you're going to watch this. She's pretty messed up. You're going to hold the fort at this time. I don't know what they're looking at. They, I don't, folks watching this, you're getting missed with stuff bad that Dr. Jeff is great at paperwork. Get your paperwork, come to DHS. Don't get stuck like this. This is daily. This is calcium absorbed from the upper part of small intestine. The amount of absorb, uh, abruption depends on the acidity of the intestinal content. The acidity. You don't absorb it in an alkaline medium. The parathyroid hormone, very simple open and shut case. When your calcium's out of range, look at the parathyroid. Remember what they did to Lisa? Remember Lisa? Lisa had a parathyroid tumor. I tried to tell her that. The oncologist cut off both of her breasts and said, you have, you have breast cancer. No, she didn't have breast cancer. She had a parathyroid tumor. There's calcifications in her breast. So Lisa lost her breast. Bobby's had two strokes. Let's have some fun. Robin's been a patient of mine for 30 years. She showed me this two weeks ago. She said, well, I went, there's my parathyroid tumor. It's supposed to be between 30 and 80. Her tumor marker was 296. It pays to be a patient of DHS. She still had her breasts and she didn't have two strokes. This is academic entry level. The blood work I looked today on the kid from the psychiatrist was so horrible from the medication. I just shrugged my shoulders and said, okay, walked out of the room. Who saw that room? We were in room, room three today. Unbelievable paperwork. Unbelievable paperwork. They just accept this. It's a train wreck. A parathyroid tumor. That, the mischief that that thing will cause. One of my favorite patients. Needed a hip replacement, stem cells, great stuff. Fixed his kidneys, fixed a genetic issue with his heart. Lost weight, got his blood sugar stable. But a plastic bite splint, that the, he's a very attentive dude to his health, they put a plastic bite splint in, jumped up his PSA. <clears throat> boom, boom, just get to watch the plastic. <clears throat> now the best thing about this guy is not that. I've had a complete home run with this guy his entire life. And <clears throat> this is the point. If he stood in the corner and looked at you with his deep, dark eyes, he would scare the daylights out of you. Wouldn't he? You know exactly. The girls know exactly what I'm talking about. <clears throat> now, two minerals. His wife said, you know, this guy's got, you know, he's pretty intense. Two minerals for the way he tested. And I said, Gabe, I don't care about all the stuff that's better on you. you <laughs> you've lost that dark spot in your eye. He said, I know I did. He said, I had no clue how much time I spent in those dark spots. I could walk through the room, I could spot every single one of those, and my staff can, because they've watched me. Lots of people have some interesting eyes, Catherine Zeta Jones' eyes. I can walk, I can describe people's mischief in their brain by looking at their busy little eyes. His brain is in a new spot, he loves it, this was nothing that he came in for. He had a still brain as a bonus. And I like that more than anything that I fixed on him. He's enjoying his life again. <clears throat> I put this up for the doctors. I said, all right. I, said, I, said, I meant this to Chris. Chris, how many people are in this room? He said 140. I said, all right. He got a 57-year-old male. His PSA is going up. He's been to all the local doctors. Good stuff. These are pills that you all recognize. And it keeps going up. And I said, all right, there's 150 doctors in this room. Why does his numbers keep going up? I had a whole bunch of these lately, and I got some happy men. Simple. The medications that he's on have blocked the liver. His estrogen shredding his body. The plastics and the estrogen, the lawn sprays, he had to get his brain fixed, he had to get his head back on, he had to get his detox pathways open, and his numbers are coming down. Medication driving up your numbers because you're blocking your ability to get rid of estrogen, which those medications did. 
So doctors didn't understand that, and not one person had the answer in that room of doctors. You gotta have the liver open to make this work. Or you'll be fighting uphill forever. Lauren, one of my great black girls, has a sister named Tori. They're real, it's a hockey family. <clears throat> 234 House Democrats and two Republicans co-sponsored to build four schools to let male athletes compete on girls' teams. <clears throat> Lauren's sister is an Olympic caliber hockey girl. It's a whole hot. I asked Lauren, what age did Tori realize she did not belong to be out there? She said 16. And she's a big girl. The guys will kill you at 16. So these idiots that think a man should play sports with a woman are a bunch of retards, and nobody's got the guts to stand up because they're all full of estrogen and plastic. They're a bunch of weenies. I play hockey. I played with women. I try to stay away from them because when I run into them, I lambaste them. I don't care how big they are. I'm denser and stronger than them. I'm very careful with them. There's about three girls in my men's league. We, we take great care. We're going to play hard, but we do not you know, hurt the girls. But the collisions out there are beastly. The slap shots are beastly. My worst slap shot from a ringer hit me right there in the chest. I'm glad it didn't stop my heart. Mm. It wasn't a glancing blow. It was a direct shot. And that little pad there did absolutely nothing. Got adjusting for a week hurt. But these people, I think they're a bunch of half trannies or something because this is ridiculous. Anybody that says that has never played sports in their life. And yeah, I said that. The men. There's World War II. <laughs> this is today. And these guys with all these big mouths out there, remember, when those big protests were going to start, nobody ever shows up because they're in the basement. You know what they're doing. Looking for a friend, aren't you there, buddy? You, if a country loses its men, you will lose your country. I was going to sing a song. What's the song? Oh, the games people play now. Every night and every day. Well, lady comes, lady walks up to me. I haven't seen Dr. Jeff for a while, and he's not helping my cough. I looked into her eyes, and I thought she was completely full of crap. So I knew she was, especially when he said that, because Dr. Jeff's fantastic at this. Great. So. She was in, I, I barged into the room, I said, shoot, a, shoot an extra in her lung. There it is, lung cancer. She was hiding that from us. People hide things from us. Now she's dead. This is since the last lecture. She's dead. <clears throat> so I said, well, well, yeah, okay, I had this thing. Really, there's a the thing, she's dead. <clears throat> Harry, you should see the things a patient do, Harry. Gets in a car accident, busts the headrest off with his head. Gets a blame. Did you ever bust the headrest off with your head tolling a car? Can you imagine that? A six month blame, brain blade blames it on the chiropractors? That's the kind of people that you deal with today. See, there's not a lot of people, of, you know, America's drifted on the people of quality. A lot of people are just looking for a free ride right now. How can they lie, cheat, and steal? I've been under the recipient of some of them. And I have to defend myself against people that lie, cheat, and steal. You should be in this position. This lady, Rachel, was in two weeks ago. I'll cheat. You remember Jane? Yeah. That's my sister. Jane. I did three really cool things on Jane. And I had her detoxing incredibly, things that you would know. She was having incredible detoxification. And I felt three marbles here. I shot a chest x-ray, lung cancer. I had great results with her. I sent her directly to Carmanos. Carmanos did some great stuff between three natural things. I think K. Truda, she was cleared last week. She played around with this with some clown in Ohio. I found, I said to the doctor, you don't want to shoot x-rays? You like practicing low? I found six of these lung cancers since the first of the year. Six of them, they didn't know. None of them knew they had this. This is a surprise. Shoot your x-rays and women, take your supplements. Women are getting lung cancer. It has nothing to do with smoking. That's a whole other topic. DHS helps you with the. You have to run interference for what you're being poisoned with. Always trying to tell you that. <clears throat> Radiation is taking out women's lungs. Oh, good. 
You know, after Mother's Day, I did it. Huh? Selenium. Yes. There was a lot. Of, after Mother's Day, there was something. I did a little blog about moms. You know, I had a great mother. My father was, you know, kind of a, more of a public person. At home, he was kind of a beastly fellow. He was kind of a tough first. He had that busy brain. So we had a tumultuous kind of childhood because my dad was pretty. He had that brain that I talked about that the other dude had. He had that busy little chattery brain that drove us all nuts until you realized that was in my family and how to deal with it. So me and my mom had a great time. And my dad was a pain in the neck. He pretty much burned all his bridges by the time he was old and decrepit. But I took care of him. He lost the other side of the family. Nobody would go visit him. I went back and forth. I took him with Tootsie Roll suckers. I did all that stuff for him because it was the right thing to do. He made my heart hurt. I took my hockey pills. I'd always go to visit him on the way to hockey so I could relax my heart because he'd stir up my heart and I could play better. I know, visit your dad, you'll be pissed by the time you get out of here. He was just that kind of dad. So always on the way to hockey. So it worked like that. So he was troublesome, but I did what I was supposed to do. Now, I said there's a very special blessing waiting people that do the right thing. There's a simple blessing. I said, what's the cheapest thing to live long that the Bible talked about? I said this thinking it wasn't a big thing because I knew about this, but the response from the public, they'd never heard this before. I'm going to repeat it. Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land. That's the first commandment with a promise. How I've watched at my age, how I've watched this generation of kids treat their parents has been disgusting. My friends, my relatives, my family, I've never seen anything like this. I've got a friend, Mary. She said, I have three kids I homeschooled. If I was in a car accident, I don't think one of them would come to the hospital to visit me. One's a pastor, and she was the best mother out there. I'm sitting at a graduation party with a relative. Ah, oh, how's your mom? Hope she chokes on her vomit and dies. My wife remembers that. I just looked at my wife. Okay, that's an interesting comment. Most of my friends lost a child from affluenza. These rich, demasculated kids have treated their parents horribly. They've missed the blessing. I did what I had to do for my parents. I hope you're doing for yours. It wasn't by choice. It was because it was the right thing to do. <clears throat> I'm sorry, your kids will probably, you might be outliving your kids the way they've been behaving. Since the last lecture, there's one of my buddies. I lost another buddy. I had two friends with lymphoma which you heard me talk about. There is one, my buddy from chiropractic school. There's my buddy Jim. Since the last lecture, I lost Jim. <clears throat> now, he was never sick. He had lymphoma in his 20s. So about I don't know, two, three, two and a half months ago, he wakes up in the morning. He never came in my office sick, ever. But two and a half months ago, woke up in the morning with a sore throat. The next morning, he can't get off the toilet. They take him to St. Mary's. By the time his wife gets there and his kid, he's blue. He's dead. He died in 36 hours. He, went, he had no spleen. He had no spleen. He worked his maintenance in the American house or something. He did a lot of their maintenance stuff because that's what he did at the free press. That simple bacteria will shred you. I said, the Muppet guy died of that. If he was in the hospital when he got that, on an IV, he'd have still died. You will never get out of that. He got went septic from that meningitis. A spleen might have picked that up just like no spleen, done. His parents, he's three miles from St. Mary's. By the time his wife got there, she said, for Pete's sakes, his fingertips were blue already. 36 hours dead from a sore throat. Take care of your immune system because a simple slip can get you. So I lost all my friends that have had cancer. Two had Lou Gehrig's disease, they're dead. Two have had Parkinson's, one's dead. Six have had brain cancer, they're all dead. Most of my friends are gone, and I graduated in 75. And they tell me we've got the best health care in the world. Really? <clears throat> so, yeah, I'm going to miss them. You heard that story before. Chronic Epstein-Barr that everybody misread for 30. He only had cancer five times. He never died from the cancer. He died from the treatment. Simple stuff for your kids. 
don't, you know, the panic out there because your kids are run. You heard all we talk about the stuff. You can drink this, a half a teaspoon, some D, some IAG, mix this up. Have your kids, you can put it in juice and they can drink it. That raises natural killer cells. You'll see me get into that. There's the vitamin D, simple stuff to drink. Spray it up your nose, it's easy. Last call, that cough that nobody can get rid of, fantastic result, learning to kill things in your lungs. I'm only showing you this because the statute of limitations is up and they can't arrest me. <laughs> if you're a Chaldean from Dearborn, there's a good chance you might have came from her indirectly. Now, I don't know, you listen to this story. One of my long-term patients, Nancy, who moved to Las Vegas years ago to open up a business with her husband and son. I'll never forget the first time she came in in 1997. How plugged shut was your heart with the pressure in your chest? Listen to this, this is a keeper. How long do you last on the treadmill, how long? One minute. One minute. One minute, in a cardiologist's office. Crushing chest pain. What did the cardiologist want to do? He wanted to do bypass surgery. One surgery. minute. And then I happened to be here the day before and got the catapulty oh, too. Oh. So after I got off the treadmill, I went in my car and shoot through uh, 10 of them. Cataplexy to hockey Because pill. the cardiologist didn't give me nothing. So straight from the treadmill, crushing angina, scheduled for a bypass, she learns what her genetics are. This is 20 years ago, she's in for a visit. She plays her genetics perfectly, nutritionally. We send her back to the cardiologist for confirmation and your cardiologist says? Said I went to somebody else and had bypass surgery. He accused her of having bypass surgery because the test was so good after she took her nutrition. I was on the She passed the treadmill test in front of him. Because a lot of people taking medications will try to take that and they can't. Well, no, I was, you put me on the high protein, low carb diet, plus with all the vitamins. Yes, then you can say that. Because there's supplements that will interfere with medications that we have to be careful about. But when your cardiologist accuses you of having a bypass because you can fly through the treadmill from supplements, I would think he would want to call and maybe he'd be interested in what those supplements were. Once again, I'm waiting by the phone Looking forward to the call. <laughs> I'm not showing you this to say how great I am. It's the money that we've spent. We're broke. We're broke from this. It gets worse. This is Janet. She's been a wonderful patient here for about 19 years now. She just reminded me of a story that I forgot about a long time ago, which is very disturbing. She had a terrible pain in her side. Can you show them where that pain was? From the center of my back around this way into the center of, of my stomach. Now, if you think it's possible to have $150,000 in tests on that pain, she claims that's how much money was spent trying to oh. determine over $150,000 for that pain. Now, you came in in the year 2000 I forgot about this So What happened? How long did it take? The chiropractor doesn't work to put to fix that $150,000 problem. Within 30 seconds, you said, get on the table, you have a rib out, and I've never had the pain since. Now, if you think this is a happy little story, how many $150,000 ribs do you think I've seen in 38 years? I've seen this a is bunch. the nonsense that's going on. My favorite one was Jerry's mother. I got, she got up off the table, hers was around her chest, it hurt right here. She stood up and said, that, rib, that pain's gone over my heart. I got $40,000 into that pain. They know what they're doing. They know that there's mechanical issues out there, but they like making money. So $150,000 later, one rib adjustment, what's your story? It gets worse. Part two, continue. Uh, I was in Ohio Hospital. Over Christmas. Over Christmas. And they did a bunch of tests. Nothing, they knew nothing. They said, go home to your doctor there. So I got home and I spent New Year's at Beaumont Hospital to have them do all the tests over because they wouldn't receive the tests from Ohio. 50,000 more on One top of the 150. 30 second rib. This is going on today as we speak. That's why the country's broke. 
Have a nice day. 200 grand on one rib. Jerry's mother was 40 grand. I could talk all day about this. A rib. We're broke. We can't do this anymore. <clears throat> all right. Ready? What do you think? I found this interesting. Just interest. What do you think we have the most of in Michigan? Besides Whitey, me. What would you guess? Huh? Fresh water. Fresh water? No, nationalities. Nationalities. Besides me, what do you think? Watch, this is pretty cool. India. Minnesota lucked out with the Somalians. It's India. I thought this was interesting. Cuba, India, Philippines, most common country of birth. I kind of like the Indians. You can cut them off on the expressway. They're not going to do anything. They don't yell. <laughs> We're not going to fight. They drive too slow. But other than that, they're pretty cool. I got a bunch of them as patients. When I get, once I get to know them, I'm like, can you get your wives to drive a little faster? Just speed up a little bit. You're fine. We like you. You've made everything work here. We're happy. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. They had to quarantine the Navy because that mumps virus that they gave them a shot for just wasn't up to... Can you imagine? They were on that boat for months because of mumps. Unbelievable. When you people tell me you're all excited to get your kids into the military, you make me nervous what the military does to your kids. Yeah. <clears throat> Now, you know there's an epidemic when they got to Photoshop the measles on a kid. It's so bad, we're going to Photoshop it. This is, I did this one for the doctors because this is the guy you want to win. Melissa walks out of the room. He doesn't want to be here. He's a crabby. Remember how miserable was he? Very. The doctors had ruined him. He's 67 years old, had nothing done right in his entire life. Chiropractors messed him up. The rheumatologist, listen to this story. Simple stuff. This is Peter. He's 64 years old. 67. 67. They don't add well in the front. They're counting money. He did not want to be there. This, young, this young man has been treated for everything from Lyme's disease to rheumatoid arthritis, and he's two weeks into his gout protocol, which nobody knew what he, that he had. How much has your life changed in two weeks? I, I can get out of the bathtub. I don't hurt anymore trying to get out of the tub. I'm 40 to 50% better in two weeks. The stiffness in my hands is uh, it's, it's going away. They're still a little sore, but I can use them. I can hang on to things. I'm tremendously two weeks in two weeks. Go to hear all these other it's missed diagnoses. All the, time. the doctors are all irritated now. They treat him for rheumatoid arthritis, Lyme, the they most complicated them. stuff. The antibiotics made him sick. Simple diet changes and simple nutrition. He's a different guy in two weeks at 67. Was it worth it? Oh, oh, I'm so happy. I've never, I've never, felt, I haven't felt this good in a long time. This is sad. Oh, I'm Those guys went to school to learn all these things. What do you think about that? I feel bad for people that have real jobs that have to perform and get results done. They've gotten away with murder for a long time. That's why I filmed so much of this. If I filmed everything, you wouldn't have time the day to watch it. By the grace of God, I've learned how to handle some of these things and set some people free from a lifetime of mischief. It's nice to see a tough guy get a new life at 67. I'm glad for you today. Two weeks. Two weeks. Thank you very, very much. You're the man. I appreciate it. You're the man. You help. You're helping. All these other people, all they do is give you the run around. The last time I was at my medical doctor, I went in there, they stared at the, was some young lady. It wasn't my original doctor. I told him I didn't want to see him because I was pissed off because he gave me the Lyme disease medicine. And I didn't have it. Right. And it hurt. But anyway, she comes in picks her nose, stares at the wall, writes down stuff on the table, and then walks out and does nothing for me. When I walked out the door, I felt like I'd been robbed for the $20 <laughs> office fee. I really did, and I told them that. And I'm talking to the lady in there, I'm trying to get the blood work done, 
and she wanted to get your name and address so she could come and see you. <laughs> the doctor's so office is asking him for my number. Me, talk to her how much better I was feeling. The, yeah, she wanted to get the number and, and name and number to come and see her. So. This is how sad it is. When are you going to wake up? Peter woke up two weeks ago, and I really appreciate your story. Thanks. Now, he hated to be adjusted because it hurt. I put the fire out of his body. Next. Go play it. Now I this adjust This is the him. famous guy that was used at my doctor lecture after years of being treated for rheumatoid arthritis, which he never had, Lyme disease, which he never had. The chiropractors messed him all up. He actually had gout. And he got his first adjustment with his gout under control. What was a real adjustment like with your gout under control? I've never felt so good. I feel great. I've been to the chiropractors before years ago, and they they never really done me any good. This adjustment that I got today was fantastic. I've never had anything like that before. I waited till his gout settled down so I could put his back in place because everybody's been fighting his back. Telling me he had rheumatoid arthritis, he had Lyme disease, his back was out of place, and he had gout. So I waited a month, he got his first real adjustment. At this age, he feels great. He can start a new life at 67. I'm sharing this because so many people have spent a lifetime being misdiagnosed by everybody. And fixing this guy at this point in my life has been a joy just for me to watch the happiness in his face. I feel like a new man. I'm sorry and for all the stuff that you've been through. I'm, I'm glad I finally come to see you because you help me more than these other medical doctors. They go in there and they're not, they just, you're a name and a tag, they run in, run out, they don't spend no time with you. You've been a, a wonderful help to me. You understand. My, yeah, I can't believe how my hands are so much better. Before they used to ache and throb. They're a little bit stiff now, but what a tremendous difference in he just in one month. He said his, every test he's had has been misread. Every, every single test. test. Every I'm sorry, test. folks, but this is a big part of my day. My day's basically been misread mischief. Thanks for your story, Peter. I love it and I appreciate it. Your wife saved your family at this age. Thank you, Dr. Dent. Thank you. Me. You're the day. You helped me tremendously. Thank, thank you. You, well, thank you know, you. the doctors me. think that these blue collar guys aren't that smart for some reason. I would rather hang out with the blue collar guys than the doctors. They're easier for me to deal with as patients. I've, that's more of my friends would be, I'd rather hang out with those guys because they're more real. The other ones have been really brainwashed by the system. Let's see. The last few administrations said, I got a really good idea. Let's buy all the medicine from China. Prince got fentanyl-laced heroin. They didn't have to start a war with the kids. They just sold us toxic medication that killed us all. Ch you let China make your food, your vitamins, and your medicine? How'd that happen? It's a crime scene is how. A total crime scene. Fentanyl, you know how much fentanyl can kill you? It's like a two grains of salt. So that's how we lost him, but Nobody cares much because it's kind of like a silent war. It's called a soft kill. Do you know why I took a picture of those two? You know why I took a picture of those two? Those two took a Volkswagen beat a, a van and three kids and went to Woodstock. <laughs> they went to Woodstock. And now he's 78 years old. I've treated this guy. He's a, they're a woodsman tree service, Ron and his lovely wife. Now my point is, he was this week, he was in, he's 78 years old, he's doing the chainsaw by himself because all the kids quit. He has no help, 78, he's out there chainsaw, I kept this guy healthy, he does a shake, takes all his stuff, I had to hold him together because the kids are a bunch of weenies and nobody can work with him. So we're doing it alone at 78 because the kids can't lift stuff today because they're weenies. If you want a job working with tree people, I can find, I, I told them, go to a Mexican restaurant, start passing out your card. 
Tell them you pay good, you'll take care of them, you just, you just start working the restaurants. That's my advice to them, because they can't find any help. That's because these guys are sitting around in a cuddle group. <laughs> if you ever catch me in a cuddle group, I want you to take a scarf, just choke me right out, because this is why the, our country's in the shape of this. Now there's a movie, this guy, when he saw the Star Wars trailer, he almost wet his pants. He was awful giddy. It was like the most exciting thing in his life. This is the men of America. This was done right in front of you, silently and subtly. That's a disgrace. What happens if there's wood involved? What are you going to do? Now, a team of researchers reviewed and analyzed 13 randomized low-dose aspirin trials. Now, they finally said, all right, after most of you had strokes from this aspirin, maybe it's time to stop. So, taking aspirin willy-nilly killed you faster than if you didn't take it. Now they're telling you that after we've lost another whole pile of people. Then when you get these brain bleeds, you blame it on the doctors once again. And you've been living on this crap forever. Millions should stop taking aspirin for the heart health. What kind of advice did you get from the doctors? Stay out of the sun, take your aspirin, get your fluoride, get your single shot, flu shot, DPT, mercury. I can go on about three months on that. You know, this is what makes my job hard. Why is he like this? I fired the pediatrician when I was 12. I got out of that system because I thought it was ridiculous as a child. How the adults played along, I have no clue what you've done. It made no sense to me as a kid because I had great insurance. They tried to poison me. Blood viscosity. I did that to here. I keep my blood slippery. Very simple. That makes my brain sharp. That keeps my eyes clear. That makes my brain. That is better than any aspirin. I do that. Keep your blood slippery at this age. Find your genetics. I don't even remember how I cleaned out Nancy's arteries. I don't remember what I put her on because that was 20 years ago. Is she still taking your pills? She said, yes. Great. They moved to, that 08 thing is when they moved out to Las Vegas because the economy was kind of crummy here and that's why they started another store. <clears throat> I want to share this with all you people that stand for a living. If you stand on your legs all day, your waitress is, you got a desk near someplace, you know, the airport, whatever, this is a touchdown. I did six and two for six weeks. I was curious how much ache would leave my body from standing on my legs all day. So I wanted to tighten up the veins in my legs. My legs feel better. Just as I rotate through my body, six, see how much aches in your legs if you stand all day. I lost it some interesting aches and pains out of my legs. Is this you guys? This is you guys, isn't it? It's you. Oh, for Pete's sakes. All right. I showed you half the story at the last lecture. This is, a this is a special story. I showed this to the doctors. Oh, boy, here we go. Raise your hand back there. Look, turn and look at this lady. Everybody look at this lovely lady. You guys killed me, so I walked in with a sick 53-year-old male. You know, it's hard for me to watch what they do to those guys that worked at Chrysler, GM, and Ford. Those blue-collar guys. This. 53, they had him in kidney failure at 53, thinking he got a deal because he had insurance. You have no clue how many of these I've seen. Number one, he's black. So what does that mean? He doesn't get any sunshine. So if you don't get no sunshine, your cholesterol goes up. Let's debilitate him here. This was a, I had these lovely ladies looking. We watch all your lectures, Dr. Ten. You have to help them. You had, a lot of, you had more faith in me than I did. How many of you were in the room with him that day? Three of them. I got three in this lovely man that's been gamed to death. BUN stage four kidney failure. His vitamin D is a nine. Why would anybody bring that up? Who cares? His vitamin D is a nine. Who cares? I want mine around a hundred. His homocysteine was 52. That's what I would check on Dan Gilbert. They completely misread Dan Gilbert. Five billion dollars. That's the stuff you check for. Nobody checked him for that. I saw that video of him. He's a mess. That, you want that under 10. So these lovely ladies watch all the lectures. 
They're all excited. These are his crappy numbers. 39, this is kidney failure. I haven't seen him for a while. He's taken his pills. I got his, put his D up, his homocysteine down, went after the kidneys. He got some of the medications out. It's the day. Look at this. I, that lecture, I held up her. My, nephew. my nephew. nephew. You called him my dad, but that's okay. Your nephew. And his homocysteine is 52. 52 3. He's in total kidney failure. Stage four. Stage four. And the kidneys are working. No dialysis or anything. <laughs> she just came to tell us. And so I saw you walk by, and I, I just wanted to thank you. <laughs> this is the lecture story I use. This, oh. is, this is your official follow-up to that story. Oh, at the lecture. Kidneys are working. The doctors are now asking questions like, um, who's this doctor? And threatening us and things like that. Threatening so, us. Did you hear that? This is the lecture threatening story us. that I used. Did your That's did how the I doctors live. misread your test? He was the one. Now this is the follow up from that, which is really exciting. And he's he's on his way back. He wanted me to let you know as soon as he's out of therapy, he'll be here to see you. Thank you. I love you guys. <laughs> I had to give you that good news. <laughs> Thank you for everything you do. What's your story? <laughs> You know who this lady is? Poland's my country. Tantanowski was my old name. So, special lady. I can't read this because I'm going to get choked up. Saved 2,500 kids and a sack from the Nazis. They caught her, busted her legs and her arms. She saved 2,500 kids. When they heard her story, they decided to give Al Gore the Nobel Prize for a slideshow on global warming and ignored this woman. What she did, Al Gore took it away from her. That's her incredible story. You know, they belong in jail. They belong in jail. You know, I got to ask these two people a question. I want to ask you, this is not political, could you not get Christian out of your soul? We were called Easter worshipers for the first time in my life. I did not know what an Easter worshiper was, but they both got together and said the same thing. I don't think whatever's in your soul, I don't think that Christian word could slide out for some reason. We might find out more what's in their souls eventually, but I thought that was very unusual to be referred to, and they, everybody said this, they had the clue on this. We're Easter worshipers all of a sudden, not Christians anymore. Very interesting. But you've got to collude together. Maybe some things your body just doesn't want to talk about because there's little crazy things inside. <clears throat> Can't use the word Christian. We can talk about it. Don't get, I'm really burned out on this uneven playing field that was used to be our playing field. If you drive up, Dill, Dave, if you drive up to the, you're in Naples, if you got a Lamborghini, and you got a Porsche, and you got a Ferrari, did I miss anything he's got, Dill? A few. Huh? A few. A few of them, of everything. He's a working stiff dude, started sweeping the floor at the plastic plant, ended up owning the whole plant, sold the plant, one of Dylan's buddies. Now here's the x-ray. He comes up from Naples, Look at that, another perfect x-ray. Ready? This guy's richer than he looks. Believe Justin. it or not, this young man coming up from Naples, yep. they wanted to th fuse three of these vertebrae together with an x-ray that looks like a garden variety entry level x-ray. If you got some money and you're down in Florida, the stuff they'll try to pull on you, he was smart enough not to fall for it. That x-ray looks as good as anybody his age should look. They were going to fuse his back together. It's I, true. I adjusted L3, L4 on the right once. How's that feel? Yeah, it's, it's true. It's all true. They wanted to do fuse three vertebrae, and I'm like, I need to go see Randy. This is a friend of the family who's never used me, moves to Florida, now decides to use me. What's your story? Don't wait this long. He can fly back and forth. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> that fuse and fuel hole still in, in Florida, they would fuse three fusions. I was on the phone with him today. I asked him, you know, again, he was not wrong and he was, he was in bad shape. He's doing outstanding. 
I adjusted him once from Naples. That's Dylan now. He's one of Dylan. Now, my son, those were the guys he hung around with. My son's success, he didn't hang around with sports figures. He hung around with guys that made a lot of money, and he learned a lot. This is one of his mentors. If you want to run around with the bums, you'll be a bum. We've seen that, haven't we? You want to run with the eagles, you'll be an eagle. Dylan's going to be running with him one day, and he's got about six friends that are just vying for my son's attention because they want to work with him because he's an engaging kid that has interests beyond Harry Potter. <laughs> this is his lovely girlfriend that I wanted to show. She was knocked out on a motorcycle. The doctors want me to teach them. Some of my crazy stuff, because I keep getting ads, people ask about stuff. <clears throat> this was a girl knocked out on a motorcycle. For you doctors with those crooked eyes, this is exactly how you want to do the brain stem. This is my son Dylan, the famous heli realtor's girlfriend, Adriana. She's been delightful. Don't let her fool you. She races motorcycles. She's had some serious headers in the past. We're going to do some interesting, she's going to get some pictures shot, and she's realized my eyes don't point straight. We brought that up at dinner one day. I'm going to show you what it's like to get an atlas corrected, and she's all excited. This is going to be a life-changing adjustment from when that motorcycle, when was that motorcycle injury? Oh, a couple of years ago. How bad did you mess yourself up? I went to the hospital. I was unconscious, so... Now, I want you to watch this. Look in her eyes. Now, if you, you guys watch close, which eye turns in? The right. Now, when you see that brain stem pinched, hold tight. This young lady is enjoying this because she's the one that wants to be the surgeon. She's taking the MCAT test. I got the right eye in, I got the right arm weak. On your back, please. This is gonna change her future, change her career, change her life. Her brain stem's pinched right under the skull. Hold tight, hold your leg up. She's been waiting for this because she doesn't want pictures taken with an eye that's not pointing <laughs> straight like Shaquille O'Neal. She doesn't want a Shaq picture. Right leg weak. Right arm weak. This is a serious deep Eye, correction. arm, leg. It has to be all of them. Here. All three. I can name the celebrities and actors that are cross-eyed from this. This was the famous Rachel adjustment. Underneath the skull here is where that head is jammed. And it's, um, yeah. There's three moves to that to get that head back. Um, it's got to be very now, specifically done, right under the skull. Thing. It's a very unique move. Hold your leg tight. If your stem's now pinched, watch. the leg's it's still go weak. All the way down. It's got to come leg. back. I got to get the leg back to get the eye back. Let's take a extended slice. Okay. Relax your head. Now there's three moves to get the brain stem. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> now. I'm going to look at her eyes. I don't expect a total correction. Watch your eyes. Now, when you look at those eyes, this is a real. Look how much different those eyes look right now. There's a pinched brain stem from a motorcycle accident some years ago where she was unconscious. Now, to get the eye starting to come back, the, the arm back, now the key is the leg. On your back, face up. I got to get it all the way down to the leg. That brain stem's unpinched. Hold your leg tight. That is a brain stem that's been pinched. Now you can get your pictures shot, yeah. and your eyes will be pointing straight. But that's what a serious atlas is like. This is the Motor City Sports Babe, and you can be found where? Um, on Instagram, Facebook. She's a very. She's everywhere with Dylan the Halley Realtor. Thanks for that story. Yeah. Was that a good atlas? Yeah. How's that feel? I feel a lot better. <laughs> Believe it or not, if she ever, you know, if she continues on, she would be the smartest one in the family. Yeah. This is a really bright girl. <clears throat> She's <laughs> really smart. <clears throat> so as a smart family, and she would be a wonderful addition. This gal got some great news. Her IQ came back, to, came back negative. 
we know that for sure, so we don't need to run a lot of other tests. Now, I picked on Trump, too, a little, so you've got to take it. This is what it's like to be rich living in West Bloomfield, Bloomfield Hills, or Franklin. So when you're 79 year old, 79, you have this horrible bloating for five to six months. You get a CAT scan and an MD decide to run an endoscopy and a CAT scan. The endoscopy and CAT scan, your food's stuck in your stomach. You don't, you're not, you're just, you got food from yesterday sitting there. So when you go to a place with marble walls and stainless steel and the doctor's got the Jaguars parked out by the side, you can see them all. What do you do with a guy who has food stuck in his stomach at 80? You put him on Prilosec and antacid to kill his stomach further. Perfectly normal. That's the most retarded thing you could possibly do to him. That's what it's like to have a marble doctor with a Jaguar in Bloomfield Hills. That's, I just laughed at this. He has to digest his food. You can't stop it. You have to move it. I don't even know what to say. Great stuff from Chris's lecture, infection. So the doctor, we got, I got 500 slides for you guys, and there's going to be a whole bunch of other. I got so much stuff that I'll share with you because some people are awake. Infection is an ambiguous term. Colonization is all that junk in your nose. It just sits there waiting. That's what I talked about. If I pull out a hair follicle, my nose will get an infection in about two days. It's very easy to stir that up for me. Colonization exists pre-infection. Carrier state, you're going to have some fun slides to read that I can't go too much over. Your sterile at birth and colonization starts and begins and it never ends after death. When you die, colonization will consume you. Bacteria is always in play. This is important. When you, the late, great Dr. Nick Gonzalez, who I learned a ton from, hanging around with all these guys, he wanted to know, are you parasympathetic dominant or are you sympathetic dominant? There's an accelerator, there's a brake. If you're parasympathetic dominant and you're pushing the sympathetic, you're going to get sick. You need to know what your nervous system's like. This one accelerates the heart, this one inhibits the heart. One dilates the pupil, one constricts the pupil. This is huge, learning to balance people's nervous systems. The inner process has had great pills for this. And Dr. Gonzalez was all over this. Are you too acid or are you too alkaline? Sympathetic dominant, parasympathetic dominant. Are you meat eater or are you vegetarian? He's got to figure all that out. Then he puts the wind at your back. This is very important to understand this. Experts say you can't smell it, you can't see it, it's mold poisoning. It's happening all over America and we're just beginning to figure out the detail. This is slides from the lecture. Mold illness may be the most important prominent health problem physicians are missing today. A hidden pandemic that's sweeping the nation, Dr. Oz, who didn't vaccinate his kids and told you to vaccinate your kids. And I would just throw that in there. Severe reactions may occur among workers exposed to large amounts of mold in occupational setting. Dr. Jeff is doing some fantastic work with mold. This was a gentleman. This was the guy I took to hockey Saturday night. I brought Eric with me to hockey. Great guy. This was his car. That was his car. Can you imagine that? His car, and Jeff is showing you the molds inside the car, inside the house, are different molds than outside the house. The inside mold is much more toxic than the normal occurring mold. There's all kinds of mold and fungus. Jeff had fantastic results, <clears throat> so if you have all kinds of weird problems, check. See what you got. Run a mold panel with Dr. Jeff. It's incredible. These things will make you sick. Now, I've had a lot of demand next Christmas, not this one, the one following, I might redo a viral lecture if I'm going to do some, pull some stuff from the doctor's seminar. We might talk about some interesting things. Three gals from the Bahamas. We are Dr. Ted. <laughs> <clears throat> These I are want my fans from the Bahamas. I tried to look at the smile on these faces. I said, if you're not careful up here in Detroit, you're going to get mugged. You got, we're going to identify you as not being from here because you're really happy and you've just got to take me for a ride because I'm not from here. 
I said, if you snarl a little bit, you're going to blend in. These guys are delightful. I wish I had whole practice of folks like this because they've been fun. They know my lectures. They know my family. They know every story. There you go. I'm hoping to send them home with a better health plan than they've gotten in the Bahamas. Yes. But they were a delight for my day. I'm going to buy them lunch now. <laughs> oh, yes. really? Because these guys brighten my day. It's fun to have people that are actually happy when they come in here. <laughs> And these guys are the three happiest ones I've had in a while. I said, I'm going to give you guys a 38 to go to the airport, drop in the mailbox, because you could get killed on the way to the airport acting like this. I said, you're going to take their wallet. They're not one of us. They were delightful. <clears throat> they asked, you know how many lectures they watch? They asked, how's Lou doing? <laughs> That's how many lectures they've watched. How's Lou doing? He's been gone for years. He's a pastor now. Mm, good. This is pretty high tech. Innate immunity is the one you're born with. Acquired immunity is the one you develop. I had a person today with a three white blood cell. That's bone marrow fatigue. What? Learn how to read your blood test. Six to eight. There's two kinds of infections today. Ones you can't beat and ones that are attacking you. Some things run too hot, some things run too cold. Sometimes you're tamping it down, sometimes you're building up. People don't understand this. It's not all we stir up the immune system. Sometimes it's overdone. You need to learn to tamp it down and that's not well understood. <clears throat> A lot of information, which you guys can help see how my time's doing. Now, natural killer cells fights cancer. IAG raises natural killer cells. There's great mushroom extracts. I will be taking these apart at that viral lecture. T it's standard process right there. Turmeric and thymus raises Th1. Put that cocktail together, it's huge. Phagocytes, eosinophils. I had a kid today uh, from Pennsylvania that we Skyped with that kid. He had eosinophil esophagitis. I think he's got worms. Your eosinophils will go up with bugs. Monocytes, macrophage, these are things that eat. This is all part of your immune system. I'm going to go into more detail when i got more time. What you're born with, the adaptive parts. B cells, bone marrow cells, natural killer cells. That's what you want to learn to make work in your system. Neutrophils, look at your blood work. What's it look like? This stuff's not read well, but it means a lot. <clears throat> natural killer cells are the police. You need to how to make these things. We're going to have more time with this, just some slides that you can study. Now the reason, why do we have to prepare? Why do we have to prepare for flu season? Well, the Pentagon said we have 25 countries that are making viruses and nasty things all over the world. That's how many bioweapon labs are inventing new diseases I put up, you know, the Pentagon is trying to design a killer virus that will wipe out 10 million people. I don't understand this, but all those labs, they're working on sneaky stuff. I don't know, hopefully it's for them and not us, and hopefully it's not even for them. Flu season. I tell you, I don't think I could have helped my, my friend at all. My friend got clipped. I hugged his wife at the funeral. I, what I said to her, I said, Jim won the lottery in reverse. You couldn't have called something like that. Look, there's things you're going to die from. There's breast cancers that will kill you in a month. There's prostate cancers that will kill you in six, six months. There's nothing you can do. A lot of things you can get ahead of. There's some you're not going to get ahead of. AML, brutal things out there. Take care of yourself while you can. I'm burnt out on the stage four things. I got lucky with this gentleman who deserved it. <clears throat> Astragalus. Great stuff for long-term immune support. Cataplex C. Bio, keep your very simple things. It's not that hard to keep yourself healthy, but you just have to pay attention. Now, when I, this is important. My mom had these books laying around the house. Hannah Kruger's books. Uh, uh, Johanna Budwig's books. She had the American Free Press. The Spotlight. Media Bypass. Folk Medicine by Dr. Jarvis, Eustace Mullins books. We didn't have around the house Harry Potter. We didn't have these idiotic things that the people read today. 
This is little witchcraft stuff. That doesn't do anything for your brain. My mother had smart books around that I picked up and read. I watched the whole world consumed with Harry Potter. What is that? I'm embarrassed. Don't, isn't there like adult things that would interest people today? I know some of you got your heads down. I'm sorry if you like that stuff. I don't mean to play with the little fantasy land. But there's the real life out there going on. And why everyone was watching little Harry Potter, they stole your country, poisoned your kids, and made everybody sick. And everybody's playing their little Dungeons and Dragons, dressed up in their little Superman shirts and their little Batman shirts. These men come in dressed like a clown at 50. If you ever see me wearing Superman or Spider-Man at 50, just shoot me because I'm a grown man by now. I'm not going to play Batman, Spider-Man games. I'm not going to be dressing up like a clown. I didn't do it as a kid. I was growing up. What happened to this stalled? My mother had the, I read that book. I read folk medicine. I was up when I went to school, just because it was around. So reading that book, I shared this last time with a doctor, but I'm going to repeat it because it's a very powerful story. That book taught me, I shared that with the doctors. I didn't share that with you last time. That book showed me how to do this. Now stop, well, before I go, look at her eye. Look where that eye is. These are clumsy, these people fall, their head's clogged up, they get weird headaches, they need glasses, it's a mess. She's, her neck's completely dislocated. But that, I learned how to do that from this book. Where is it? Oh, next one. Rachel's been one of my favorite patients for three decades now. She told me a story when we met but I have no clue and don't remember any part of the story. None of it. It's a fantastic story. She told it to me today. I'd like to hear it. She was pregnant, and they told her what? They told me that I had stage 2 cancer and that I should consider aborting my baby because I might not make it through the pregnancy if I didn't. And I left that office and came to Dr. Tim. And for the doctors, I used Johanna Budwig's work. She was an old Nobel Prize nominee. I can't really get into that now, but you were pregnant at the time. Continue I was. on. I started to treat you, what happened? Yeah, so I seen you for the whole nine months of my pregnancy. Took all the right supplements. Took all, got off of all bad hydrogenated oils. I got off sugar. I um, was doing flaxseed with companion nutrient and um, was on a couple other supplements and went back, had my baby, went to see the cancer specialist as a follow-up and the cancer specialist did a biopsy and um, I got dressed, was getting ready to leave. He came in and literally grabbed me by the hand and took me into a room that was full of white coat people sitting at a table and he cleared the room. And I had a feeling and in that moment, that whatever they were doing there, he was going to teach them something about whatever they were discovering on me. But he got everybody out and he sat me down and he said, I have never had a patient go from stage two cancer to nothing. He said, you don't even have dysplasia. Nothing. You have nothing. What did you do? What hospital was that at? Pontiac General. Nutrition is incredible. They threatened her with the loss that you can lose your life and your baby. How old is your son now? He'll be 23 this summer. She's got all the kids are fine. She's grown it all out. And I had the doctors confirm everything. They were in charge of everything. I just did what I do. Yep. Thank you for that story, Rachel. Enjoy your children. Welcome. That's a keeper. Did you hear what everybody said? That's the second person that was threatened for getting better. You catch this? Yeah. <clears throat> There was Wait, what did she say about the lawsuit? Sorry. She said there was she was threatened with a lawsuit. The doctor, well, the doctors aren't your friends. They turn you into social services. They want you to get shots. They're paid to brainwash you. She was threatened with a lawsuit. You saw that the kidney guy, they said they were threatening him. What did you do? They're mad that I fix people. I have I I carry. I have to be on my toes. This isn't this, we're not designed to get people better. We're supposed to make, we're supposed to orchestrate your mess. Compromise, you got no tonsils, be on your toes. You gotta have tonsils. Tonsils were big, they took out your tonsils. Oh my, that was a 
complete mess. Turmeric forte, stick that and that thymus together. Extremely powerful together. That's the tumor, that's, that's the one that works. That's, Chris, what is the absorption rate of that? It's, uh, 48 times more that's the one. I'm taking two or three of those a day. There's your little chemo thing that you can do right now. That's, that's the one that absorbs well. It absorbs really well. Very simple, very cheap. Stick it in your... <clears throat> you people that work in an in a office, use your nose sprays. Spray your stuff in your nose, gargle with your citrus the liquid, keep your head clear. You're getting sick to your nose and to your mouth. Learn to control that. Spray it in your nose, keep your nose clean. I use this kind of stuff because I'm surrounded with all these people that have interesting diseases. Quick story, 40 year old lady bleeding. They stick a estrogen soaked IUD inside of her. When you're bleeding, an estrogen, <laughs> look at the women that know stuff. I had no, this is one of my Albanians, Linda, she's delightful. They stick an estrogen soaked IUD, her breast doubled in size, like in six months, now they're biopsying her breast. And I hear her story, for Pete's sakes, they loaded you up with estrogen, we popped out the IUD, pushed the estrogen out, her whole body went back, she goes back to the doctor, it's a female. This stuff made me bleed. And she looked at my patient and said, I've never heard that before. I don't even... <clears throat> I, the Albanians, I have them all. Why is it that when archaeologists find human remains, they only find two genders? There's only male and female in the archaeology world. I don't know what happened here. <laughs> but apparently there was only two in the olden days. Now we have a, now we have a pile today, apparently. My son, there's the famous judge. Oh, Judge helped us out a lot. Thank you, Harry Agnier. Because Harry, you taught me how to fix, I know Harry watches these, you taught me how to fix his wife. When a judge's wife went down with a stroke, Providence Hospital said, boy, Pat had a big stroke last night, but we don't know where it is. So the judge brought his wife in. She had a seizure. She had a hypoglycemic seizure from not eating. Providence called it a stroke. I called it a seizure. I won. They lost. Our tickets were handled. <laughs> Great guy. Now I want to, this is important. After a divorce, he just paid $444 million for that boat, paying no taxes on $11.2 billion. In, now my wife's in the back. I want to just clear something up right now. Me and her haven't had a vacation in a long time. My staff gets vacations. They get retirement. We really can't afford to. Running this monstrosity costs a fortune. I haven't had time to, I couldn't even get out of here. It's too much of a revenue loss to pay these people well to support everything. I am not rich. I live check to check like the rest of you. <clears throat> this guy's sucking money out of everybody's pockets, not paying any taxes. This is a crime. Who lets him get away with this? He's crippling the businesses in America. Me and my wife had a couple discussions and some tiring days about how long you want to do this. If you will support the office and not him, you're going to have me here for a while. If this guy gets all the business and we do all the work, you're not going to have me here for a while. So I'm telling all of you, I've done this 39 years. I haven't had a vacation this year because it's expensive to run this. You support the office, we'll be here. But I'm kind of burnt out right now, fighting Amazon and all the stores that are out there, sucking business out of us. Nobody teaches you nothing. I've spent 39 years doing this. I would encourage you to support the office because me and my lovely wife could walk. And I've had a lot of stress and a lot of pressure from this job. These results keep me hanging in there. If I didn't get these results, I'd have left a long time ago. I would encourage you to support the office. Let me have a vacation once in a while because it's very difficult to afford this when you've got to pay the bills we've got to pay with the slimy, slippery critters that are out there that are taking all of us for a ride. I have been taken for a ride. I lost my vacation. You want us here, support the office because there's a time in my life this gets kind of old fighting all the time. I'm threatened. You hurt them all. You two people threaten me because I fixed them. This is what it's like to get people well running for cover in a system that's supposed to be free. It's embarrassing. You want me here, support the office, because it would be easy to leave. <laughs> Very easy. Did you get it? 
Now, there's the famous cardiologist down in Texas. Every time somebody compares us, the medical community likes to consider us them one of us. Look at the look on my face. I just asked him a question after his cardiology, get a fantastically bland cardiology seminar. I'm not going to mention this dude. There's some genetics in my family. I walked up to him and asked him a question. What do you know about blank? Not much. Jeff, would you take a picture of the two of us? I have a genetic clotting factor. Lipoprotein A, homocysteine. I just wanted, what do you know about these? Please, God, anything. He said, nothing. Jeff, take a picture of the two of us. And that's why my sarcastic look on my face. I have a very smug look. Now, this medical guy, God bless him, great guy, those eyes are gone. He's halfway to dementia. I'm look, I got guys in my hockey league shaking hands with going through the line at the end of the game. They look at me like that. Will you remember me next game? That's a dead eye. Done. He's plastic. He just, the medical community does not look as healthy as us. They think they're one of us. Does do we look the same up there? No. I take him on the always he'd be dead in the first five minutes. He wouldn't make it. Great guy, but just the medical community is weak. I've heard all their seminars. My, Jeff could have done a better seminar than what we sat through in biotics. Chris, it was rough. We talked about SIBO. Five doctors talked about SIBO for like eight hours. <clears throat> they, then I go blow through my stuff. This is you. Can you imagine doing the same thing to everybody? They did the same thing to everybody. I'm sitting down, you gotta be kidding. I just thought, so people go for my stuff because I do it this way. It's reverse and all was the best. I'd put Dr. Versenal in a room with anybody, and I have really worked his skills. You give me 100 patients, I'd put Dr. Versenal, I was going to beat them all. I'm not going to, he's going to get them all, but that guy was so good. When he went into a room, he lit the room up, and I got a treat for you today from Dr. Versenal. I looked at the doctors. I said, look, one of you guys put this lady on so much DHEA, you gave her breast cancer. She had a gigantic lump in her breast from nutritional stuff that she forgot. So the rich people go to a bunch of doctors. She took so much DHEA, she grew a lump in her breast because she couldn't handle it. And pounded all the estrogen out of her body. Lump was gone in three months, but it was a nutritional thing that stirred this up. Stay on your toes. A swollen leg. The guy told me that in the second visit, not the first visit. This was the second visit, not the first. This was a secret that he kept from me why his leg was swollen. They, we will get sued and clobbered by stupidity. This is stupidity. He's dead now. He's an idiot for a patient. A little secret that he kept. This is, I was afraid to talk about this because some people have had their lives saved by this. I don't mean any disrespect from this. But I'm going to tell you something. That whole brain dead thing and organ harvest thing is really murky. There's some real, you don't want to ask a lot of questions, just take the kidney and shut up. Don't ask a lot. <clears throat> the vaccine things, I'm not to go buy that today. It was two, 282 in 2000, it's about two grand in 14. It's a money making, read that, Bill and Hillary had a huge part of vaccinating our kids. Bill and Hillary, they jumped right in the middle of this. They probably got a huge check for that. 73. This is a very attentive 73 year old. It took from 05, 06, 07, 09 to repair both breasts. There's her thermos scan. Three, they, 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 they just kept going as everybody's working towards cancer. She was in this a couple weeks ago. She was just giddy. Taking the right supplements, her breasts came back to life. You're going to see some quantum stuff at the next lecture with your field broadcast. This is heavy stuff. I'm going to take you to a bizarre journey. The famous Dr. Versendahl. Roll them. Wow. <laughs> she says. See? All right. Now, what's your next problem? A heel or a foot or something? Uh, in the back of knee. Back of your knee. Okay. Hold no, your... not back of knee. Right here. Front, right. front of your knee? The back of the front? Front of your knee. Hold your arm up. Tight. He was a character. Now, what has she got? Subluxated knee. Okay. Now, you put your head there. No, wait a minute. Put your head here. It was your right knee, correct? Okay. Now, when somebody's knee goes out, it'll go out with your hand like that. Now, what you do, everybody has a notch in their knee. 
Everybody has a notch in your knee right here. In fact, you've got four notches. Pay attention. Here, here, and here, but the biggest one is right here. That's the biggest joint in the knee, right here. And that is the joint that goes out almost all the time on most people that have knee problems. You take the web of your hand and you fit it in it. Now just drop your leg, just drop it, okay? Now, what you gotta do is just go up and down like this and then bring the leg inwardly like this and your hand that way. So you're going like this. Here we go, maybe we can hear it. There it popped, did you hear it? Pop. Now it's back in place. If it keeps going out, what do you give her? Legaplex two. Now isn't that nice the way that's snapped? Wow. Yeah. That was great. <laughs> now, I'm down in Tampa Bay, the Tampa Bay Lightning, Darcy Tucker. He was, one guy walked in, I was eye to eye with one guy. It's like, oh my gosh, you're my size. There's actually, they were all like this. I'm telling you, he had to be a bad dude to be this small compared to those guys. Both knees. <clears throat> he, has, he got up off that table what the biggest response was, how come you guys can't do this? <laughs> He's, I never, both knees were out like that. He starts doing this. He said, I'm gonna get 40 goals this year. Simple mechanics. I watched Dirk, I watched Versendahl do everything for years. I hung out with this guy. I don't care about the Chronicles of Narnia. I went to Versendahl. <laughs> I did the Tesla, I didn't go to Batman, I didn't dress up like a boob. I was hanging out with smart men like my son did. Have your interesting material around your house. Have stuff for your kids to read. Don't have boobery around your house because my mother didn't have it around the house. We read intelligent stuff. And I'd like to make <clears throat> my friend Andy, Dorothy Hubel has passed away. This isn't gonna mean much to a lot of people. This lady had a lot to do with a cancer group in Detroit for how many years? How many years was Dorothy involved with the cancer group? 40, 50 years. She passed away at 95. She was a great soul. I'd actually like to acknowledge her that she passed away. Now, in Washington, how many men in Washington seem to have some kind of integrity? Name. Do you think in Washington, who would you name? I, one person's gonna come to mind, Ben Carson. Ben Carson has been a man of his prayer breakfast. When he did that prayer, Obama had to sit up and take notice. It wasn't the prayer Obama thought he was gonna do. But I got wind of something. Ben Carson was raised in Michigan. I totally am enamored with that guy because he he's just an honest Christian. In Michigan, he was promoting a series. Jesus on Prophecy, from Ben Carson's organization. I took seminars from SOT, I took Logan, I took, I did everything to learn stuff that other people didn't know. Go to your seminars, learn some things. The level of brainwashing is beyond what I think you're understanding from all aspects. Now, I wanna say one, I wanna thank Chris for doing a great introduction. I want to thank my lovely wife because she's actually quite stronger than me. She has helped me stay here doing this. If I don't have somebody as strong as her doing the back door of this, I'd have quit by now because I can't really take it. I want to thank my wife. I have a fantastic staff. You guys have done a fantastic job. <clears throat> We're going to miss. I want to say goodbye to Dorothy. Thank Dr. Jeff for his great job. I'll be back with a special energy lecture at Christmas. Thank you all for coming.